Is your home stressing you out? In today's video, we'll be talking about the power of rituals to create harmony and reduce stress. At the start of a new year, I'm always looking for creative ways to bring more harmony and balance into my home and life. After the holiday frenzy has died down, I love to lose myself in quiet reflection so I could focus with more direction and intent. If you're looking for simple ways to reduce stress and bring more peace and calm into your life, this video is for you. I find that instituting small rituals and following them with some creative freedom allows me to find calmness in the chaos of life. Rituals can help you stay present while you're focused on simple acts like making your coffee every morning or lighting your favorite scented candle before bedtime. What is a ritual? Simply put, a ritual is a set of actions that you perform regularly. Many things we do every day are a little ritualistic. Imagine in the morning when you get up out of bed, you might brush your teeth first and then you shower. You might shower and then have a cup of coffee. For me, it's really simple. I have my cup of coffee before I do anything else. I'll have my cup of coffee, I get the kids dressed and changed in the morning, and then after that's all said and done, and then I brush my teeth. That might seem a little bizarre to some people, but for me, brushing my teeth after I have my coffee not only helps me get all those coffee stains out, but it gets my morning started off in the routine that I like best. If you flip the order of your routines and record how you feel, some people might not even spot the difference. But for others, you might report that your morning routine feels a little off. For the latter people, their morning routine has become more of a ritual. It matters to them which order they do it in, and when they do it right and in the correct order, it helps them tackle their day with more confidence and ease. What makes a ritual a ritual? Is it something that you do with repetition? When I'm talking about rituals, I don't mean a religious ceremony. Sure, your ritual may be tied to your faith or your religion, but that's not what we're talking about in this video. We often find that a majority of people's rituals are just something that's personal and private to them. Just think, no other family celebrates Thanksgiving or has dinners the way that your family does. No other couples call each other by the same pet names or have secret greetings for each other. I have a set of rituals that I perform at the start of every single year, and here is why. Rituals are a powerful human mechanism for controlling extreme emotions and in some cases they can also help reduce stress and anxiety. Rituals can play a number of critical roles. Rituals within families and our partners can help strengthen our bonds and our connection to each other. Rituals in the home can help inspire us to live more meaningful lives. Rituals at the beginning of a new year can help us focus our intentions and lay the groundwork to help us reach new goals. I have created a set of rituals that helps guide my intention at the start of every new year. Growing up in an Asian household, the new year doesn't really officially start for me until the lunar calendar says so. This year, the lunar calendar says that the new year starts on Saturday, February 10th, which is great because that gives me an entire month after Christmas to get my home and life in order. Remember that before you embark on any type of ritual or tradition, it's a good idea to state your intention and ultimate goal. The whys behind your design are just as important as what you're putting into your space. So be very mindful and intentional when you're creating a new ritual. The first home ritual that I do at the start of every single year is to deep clean my house. Studies show that one of the leading causes of stress for homeowners is not having enough money to spend on their house. Right underneath that is all about home organization issues. You have the home, you have the space, but it is chaotic. When our homes are cluttered, we can't even think straight. So one of the first things that I always do and advise you to do is to deep clean the home. I find deep cleaning the home so therapeutic. I love organizing my drawers and shelves. I love having a place for everything and putting everything in its place. For me, the first step to a happy home is a clean home. Take note of the things that you use regularly and get rid of the things that no longer serve you or your family. When you have a system of organization in place, tidying up the house is such a cinch. I never really take more than five minutes to clean up any one room in the home because for me, cleaning is almost like a daily chore. It's something that I mindfully participate in the minute I step into a room so I don't have to spend an entire afternoon carving out time to do so. The next home ritual that I perform every single year is that I buy new bedding. You spend one third of your life in bed, so investing in new quality bedding is an investment in yourself and your well being. Which is why I want to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. I've been sleeping on Brooklinen's best selling Lux Hardcore sheets for years now, and here's what I love about it. These sheets feature a luxurious 480 thread count with a slight sheen for a luminous glow. 
Sateen is usually more tightly woven and heavier in weight than parkale, making it warmer and buttery soft, ideal for year-round comfort. You can choose to mix and match from over 20 different colors and patterns to build your new bedding bundle. Build your set. You can start with a neutral base, and add colorful quilts and coverlets to change up the look without investing in a whole new set. I have the Luxe Hardcore Bundle in ivory and I'm adding organic cotton quilts and a matching sham to this year's look. Brooklinen offers so many different color combinations with patterns so you can start out with a neutral base which is my personal favorite and then you can also add on like a pattern coverlet or a pattern quilt. The organic cotton quilt that I'm layering on to this year's sheet set is just so luxurious. It has a little bit of a heavier weight to it, which is perfect for those chilly mornings where I just want to snuggle up in bed for just a few minutes longer. And I love how the texture of the quilt actually adds some contrast to my bedding, even though they're both in very similar colors. I love the quality of Brooklyn and sheets because it always makes me feel like I'm waking up in a really luxurious hotel suite. I want to thank you Brooklyn and for sponsoring this video. Brooklyn and is offering my viewers a special discount of $20 off orders over $100. Use code JULIEXQ to receive the discount and I'll add a direct link in the description box so you can shop the look. Next on my list of rituals that I perform at the start of every single year is to organize or reorganize all of my drawers. I always start in the kitchen, which is the room in the home that of course our family uses the most. I really just focus on a zone for the day. I don't try to tackle everything at once. I don't want to overwhelm myself. So one day I could be reorganizing all of the drawers. This includes the junk drawer. You know that drawer in the kitchen where all of your junk goes to die. We've got pens in there. We've got stationery in there. I have all sorts of junk in there. And my favorite way to corral them is with small tiny boxes. You could use acrylic boxes that you can see through. You can even recycle old boxes that your Christmas cards came in. One of the best ways for you to reorganize your junk drawer is to place everything into smaller boxes and arrange them in a way where everything's flat and you can see it at a bird's eye view and you don't have to lift anything up to find what you're looking for. Next, I'll be moving on to my kitchen's corner cabinet. If you're opening your corner cabinet and it looks a little bit like mine, don't worry, I have a system in place for you. I don't have a whole lot of room in the kitchen to begin with, so every single drawer and cabinet holds valuable real estate. I find that organizing and grouping all of my plastic bins according to containers, tops, caps, and different sizes really helps me to locate them quickly and efficiently. Remember that spices and seasonings do expire, so you want to take one hard look at that drawer or cabinet that's holding all of your spices and seasonings, then you can start throwing them out once they're past their expiration date. You might be surprised to see how much more room you have as a result. When it comes to utensils and my serving ware drawers, I have a very simple rule. Keep two things that work extremely well and throw the rest out. There's no reason for you to stuff 10 ladles in a drawer that you can't even open when two of them work just fine. Moving on to the bathroom. After purging and cleaning, your first order of business should be throwing out all of your expired medicine, toiletries, and cosmetics. Yes, makeup does expire. When your mascara gets clumpy, those need to go. When that face cream is getting a little runny or the oil has actually separated from the cream, in the trash can it goes. If you have items that you no longer use but they haven't passed their expiration date, keep those items corralled in a box where you can donate it to a local shelter. I like to tap clothing and apparel last since I need a little bit more time to try on the items. Once I start to reorganize all of my drawers, I love the Marie Kondo method of folding my clothes. The system of organization allows me to see all of the items in my drawers so I never have to fuss around for that really soft and comfy t-shirt that I want to sleep in tonight. Or if I'm looking for a particular sports sock to wear with my tennis shoes that day, I never really have to go through all of the drawers since I can see everything front and center. Let's move back into the kitchen. Another ritual that I perform at the start of every single year is that I replace all the chip cups and bowls. If you're looking at your kitchen cabinets right now, you might find that one single bowl that has a chip on it or a little crack in it. You must throw that out immediately because it's all about manifesting more abundance and wealth in the start of a new year. Who wants to eat on a chipped plate? It's almost like looking at your reflection in a cracked mirror. Having a meal could be a very simple ritual that you engage in every single day. You could be sitting down with your family for family dinner. You might even be enjoying a simple meal for yourself in front of the television. When you're eating from a chip bowl or a cracked plate, that simply says to me that you don't care. You're not paying attention to your daily rituals and the simple act of having a meal every day. Being mindful of these little details and staying present in your daily rituals could greatly reduce stress and anxiety. 
when you replace all of those damaged cups, bowls, plates, or even utensils that you're using every day to eat, that sends a signal to your home, your surroundings, and your entire being that you care. You care about the effort that you put into your home, and ultimately yourself. After the Christmas tree is down and the lights are all removed, I'm ready for Lunar New Year. I love to decorate the house in tons of gold and bright red. Red is such an auspicious Chinese color. You'll see lucky red envelopes, lucky red dragons, blooming florals in bright colors like yellows and oranges. My favorite Lunar New Year flowers are cherry blossoms, orchids, and chrysanthemums. I love seeing my house filled with all these vibrant colors of yellows and reds and pinks. That feels so Lunar New Year to me and it helps me get the year started off just right. Every year I'll take my daughter to Asian Garden Mall and then we start to buy new decorations. I love firecrackers, red lanterns, anything that brightens our home and makes it feel so much more festive, especially after the Christmas decorations have come down. Here are my personal grooming and beauty rituals that I do at the start of every new year. I always cut and color my hair right before the start of Lunar New Year. New Year is all about a rebirth. It's a chance for you to start anew, start with fresh energy and a fresh perspective on the things that you'd like to do for the year. Even though I like to wear my hair short, I always trim off like one or two inches at the start of every year. Symbolically in Eastern culture, cutting off your hair really means you're cutting off the dead energy that you had in the past. Once all that old energy is gone, you can grow out new energy and a new start. After my hair is cut, then I'll make sure that I touch up on the roots and color my hair. I want a fresh cut and new color. Now if you have pets, it's also time for you to groom the pet. You want to get rid of all of that pet energy from the previous year as well. I always want to start from the top down so you have a little bit of extra money in your budget. You could invest in a pedicure, a manicure, new nails, lashes if you get that done, maybe even a nice facial or a massage. For me, I keep it really simple. I get my hair cut, I get it colored, I do the mani-pedi, and then I'm done with all of the grooming to start my new year. Aside from my home beauty and grooming rituals, let's get into my Lunar New Year rituals. After Christmas, Lunar New Year is easily my favorite holiday in the entire year. I have these rituals and traditions that I've adopted from my family that I have done for over 20 years now. I love partaking in all of my annual rituals. It gives me a sense of control and it helps reduce my anxiety and stress at the start of a new year. One of the first things that I do is that I make sure that the luckiest sign in our family enters the home first. If you follow Chinese astrology, every year is tied to an animal from the Chinese zodiac. For 2024 is a year of the dragon. The dragon is one of the most auspicious animals in the Chinese zodiac. It's considered a mythical creature, but in Chinese astrology, it has all-encompassing power. When it's your year, it's a bad luck year. So if you're year the dragon, you don't want to enter the home first. You want to look for a compatible animal. In this case, a monkey or a rat to enter the house first. What does that mean in Lunar New Year terms? The Chinese believe that those who are the luckiest should enter your home first so they could spread that luck and wealth through everyone in the household. I'm a monkey, which is very compatible with the dragon. I will be entering the home first, so all of the luck and energy I bring for 2024 filters to my entire family as well. Another ritual that I do in the start of a new year is I go to temple and pray. I am Buddhist by religion. Am I super hardcore Buddhist? No. I believe that being Buddhist is all about just having an awakened mind. Being mindful and intentional is very important to me. That doesn't mean I need to go to the temple every single day to pray. I also have a small altar in my home that I use to pray for my ancestors and other Buddhist deities. So the ritual of me physically going to the temple at the start of every Lunar New Year along with my family is something that I absolutely love. I enjoy our bonding time. I enjoy the connectedness. The kids get dressed up. We burn incense. We pick tangerines. It's just a good and fun time for all. No Lunar New Year's is complete in an Asian household without feasting and gambling. If you're Asian, I'll bet there's a handful of things that you do every single Lunar New Year. You go to the bank and you exchange 
exchange money for new money. You stuff lucky leasey red envelopes with this money so you can pass them out to all of the kids, your family, and friends. You're feasting, you're gambling, you're playing a lucky dice game. Lunar New Year is just so fun, so festive, filled with all of these rich traditions and daily rituals that I can't wait to pass along to my own family and friends. At the start of a brand new year, everyone always starts about setting new goals, new resolutions, going full steam ahead. Some of us are simply trying to reset and need a calm and safe space to do just that. When you devise your own rituals, they contain more personally relevant and symbolic aspects. Even remembering a ritual from the past can help you stay present and focused. Rituals don't have to happen organically. You can invent one to capture a warm and fuzzy feeling or even regain some control if you're feeling a little lost. So I would encourage you all from your corner of the world to invent a new ritual or even borrow one of mine. Take notice of your home and surroundings how the simple act of creating meaningful rituals can enhance and balance your life. That's it for today's video, everyone. I wanna thank you, Brooklinen, for sponsoring this video. Use code JULIEXQ to receive the discount, and I'll add a direct link in the description box so you can shop the look. If you like this type of content and you want more interior design and feng shui tips, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have a small ritual that has impacted your life in a meaningful way. I would love to get some new ideas and share them with our viewers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.